Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7 and I am back with the review for this week's daily races. We're going to start off with daily race A at Alskas Village. We're in the Alpine, it's a road car, it's very much a daily race A combination. It's not a track I've driven that much on this game, but it is a standing start as you can see here. So yeah, if you do enjoy these videos, do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments what you think of these races and also rate the races yourself. Daily Race A, B and C, love to hear your opinion on what you think of these races. But yeah, we're going to jump into Daily Race A as you can see now. And we've got a reasonable start there from this standard start. Considering we don't even know where we're going to go. Pretty much on some of these corners, it's not my most known track. Although I do kind of know the layout. I just don't really know how to push the corners maximum you know, pace when it comes to, especially a road car like this. But we're going to go down this right hand side. Should be careful of this car through these corners does have a tendency to want to rotate as we look behind us and there's quite a lot of chaos going down behind us there but yeah through here you can see p4 right up the inside a little bit of contact with the spanish driver and now we're going to go into the next corner so we're going to look down the right hand side here and we go for a later break in break in around that 100 ball bit past 100 ball again be careful on the way this car rotates us looks like the spanish driver gave the other driver there a little nudge in the rear and that's pushed him wide and that's bumped me up to p4 now we're gonna have a little look again this left hand corner i'd like to break early i figured out breaking a little bit early here and then waiting for that rotation and then getting on the throttle seemed to work for me as we go up to p3 and pretty much into a podium very very quickly in this race we're only halfway through lap one now it is only three laps this race so it's not the longest race you're ever going to do but the lap is fairly decent in terms of how long it takes to do a lap but yeah it's not the longest daily race a we've ever had so three laps a little bit short what i would say so considering i don't really like this track and it's not really my favorite what i would say is there p2 misses it breaking on that corner it's going to cause a little bit of chaos every single race that corner because it's very tricky to get the car slowed down for but yeah this track with this car is actually reasonably fun from considering i don't really understand the track fully i felt like i enjoyed driving this combination the car likes to slide out it feels quite drifty which is actually kind of good for this track now on this corner here you have to be very very careful as you can see i'm about to meet barrier there straight into the wall luckily i turned it as i went in so i didn't get the penalty for the wall hit but yeah you have to be very careful on that corner it's very easy to miss your braking and go straight on there but got away with that kept myself in p2 and yeah, like I say, this combination is actually reasonably fun for a daily race. It's not the best daily race we've ever had. Let's be honest about it. It's not, it's not one of the best. But I'm sure if you like this track and if you get good people on the race with you who also enjoy racing around here, I reckon you could have some decent little battles because you can take some really you know, wide lines on some of these corners as I go really wide there, not through choice, just through making a mistake. And we let the driver behind us take that P2 off me. But we're going to try and get that position back if we can. So let's see if we can manage to grab that P2 back. So going through these corners. This is the right-hand corner up here where, like I say, you're breaking just after the 100 boards on the left. Um, we're going to see if we can get a good exit from here. He's gone a little bit deep into that corner. That's going to lose him a little bit on the exit. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer as we go into the next left-hand corner. This is, again, a tricky corner because the car does like to rotate through this corner. So again, breaking nice and early down to third gear then back up to fourth gear on the exit so power down fourth gear on the exit and let's see if we can go around this corner. now this corner actually opens itself up for some good little battles through here because you can take some different lines through here so he's, he's gone for the wide line i've gone for the narrow line we're side by side having to give it a little lift through there to give him the space on the exit he's managed to hold that round the outside and he's going to keep himself in p2 there so now we're going to go into that braking zone this braking zone is incredibly difficult like i say you've just got to be so careful with this car does it it wants to rotate so slow it down nice and early then get on the throttle and now we're going to go into this next left hand corner which again we're going to go down to third gear and then back up to fourth gear on the exit so third gear then back up to fourth gear and you can see that really worked quite nicely for me as he goes off the track and we're going to go back up to p2 in this race and then if you keep your eye on that mirror you're going to see he makes the same mistake that i made early on in the race where the braking zone very very difficult to get so we get it just about avoid getting hit in the rear there and hold on to the p2 so overall it's a reasonably fun combo i don't think it's the best race we've ever had it's it's okay three laps is a bit too short four laps would have been a little bit better and the problem with this race is it's not very competitive i don't think that many people will enjoy driving this track so it's a pretty average six out of ten it's not the worst race 
it's not the greatest race, but six out of ten, I think, is pretty fair for Daily Race A. Let me know what you think for Daily Race A in them comments. But yeah, Daily Race B, we have Fuji in Group 4. It's a short version of Fuji. It's a good combo in terms of track and car, enjoyable to drive. However, four laps, I feel like four laps is far too short. I think this race needed to have more laps. You can see I'm on my American account for this race, going from the back of the grid and just seeing if we can find some entertainment over on the American servers. And it's actually, I actually found the race is probably more enjoyable to do over there. Um, probably because you can go from the back of the grid and we can battle our way through. But yeah, it, on the EU, it just felt like you start at the front, you don't really have much race and it's four laps. It's a bit of a problem. It needed to be six laps, I think, this race. If this race was six laps, I think it would have been a lot more enjoyable, especially with the slipstream you get on this combination because in the slipstream, it's a massive benefit here as we're starting the race from the back in P14, going into this left-hand corner, just being careful of the chaos. Turn one has huge potential for chaos on this track because you're going from such high speed into a really heavy braking zone. And also, in Group 4, you're going to be picking up massive slipstream so make sure you be very careful into turn one for your braking zones but yeah as we come through here we're going to get into the slipstream of the msx and we're going to try and bump draft him to see if we can get alongside the i think it's the evo on our left hand side there so trying to use the slipstream for the msx we're going to rev out here now in the citrum by the way for this race if you were wondering we're using the citrum and we've got a little bit of chaos right on the corner i'm not sure what happened there but two cars coming together and that's two positions gained and we've got the car in front of us that's picked up a half a second penalty so quite a bit of chaos on this track i do have to say and it's reasonably enjoyable for the opening lap or two as we get a little bit of a punt there from the evo and he's going to carry on overtaking i'm not sure if he just missed his braking but he's going to try and hold it around the outside and then we're going to go up onto the inside and try and hold this position so we managed to keep ourselves in p11 there but yeah a fair amount of chaos but only four laps definitely feels too short for me i feel like it could have been a no it could have been an okay race really if it was six laps i think you'd have had some good chance of battling because it's got good variety in cars you can use quite a few different cars on this track you'll be surprised at the amount of group four cars that will actually work reasonably well on this combination but yeah it's that big four lap question as we're going to go into the braking zone again the evo going down the left hand side We've managed to hold on to there in P10 and we've got the McLaren in front of us there, Chikorito going off the track there. Um, actually, that is not the McLaren, that is the Ferrari, as you can tell by the engine sound coming from it. But yeah, the Ferrari again round here, very good car, McLaren, but Chikorito goes a little bit wide there. We're going to take that inside line. He had dirty tyres, so up the inside and now up into P9 and fast forward in the rest of this lap towards the end here. So we're going to come up to this right hand corner. And as we come through, we get a nice line through there. Piece 8 goes a little bit wide. He's going to go defensive. And we're going to try and hang it around the outside. Now, this car, the Citroen, is really good at rotation. So we can actually send it around the outside. Not give him much space, but we do manage to hold the inside for this next corner and get ourselves up into P8. So position gain there. And now we're catching up to this next group of drivers. And you can see here now, not far away from them at the start of lap 3, and then as we come to the end of lap three, you can see he's starting to catch up to P7. So a little bit of battling going on at the front there. And it all just feels like it's going to be over too quickly. Because just as you're starting to get into this race, I feel like you're starting to get some good battles. You're starting to really get a rhythm going. And then suddenly you're on the last lap. And that's what it feels like. It just feels like it's over too soon. So a shame that PD didn't really put six laps or even put some of the similar weather conditions that we had at Spa where like four or five races were dry. The odd race had like full wet or intermediates or even some parts of the track wet and some parts dry this one would have gone really well with them settings it's a shame that pd didn't use that because you still would have had the dry racing for the majority of races so most people are happy if you just like dry races but the unexpected would have really added an extra element to it but yeah coming up to the final lap now getting ourselves up into p7 and we're going to try and break on the inside as late as possible and hold this position you can see the car on the left there trying to break a little bit later going to have really good traction though that car behind it's four-wheel drive citroen though good with rotation gets itself out of that corner and off into p7 but yeah you can see we're just starting to catch these up we're just starting to get into a, a rhythm starting to enjoy the race and it's pretty much race over and as you can see there we just start to catch right up behind them into the citroen on the final lap into this battle for i think it's p2 3 4 5 and 6 so really good battle developing in front of us there if it would have been two more laps could have been a really entertaining end but yeah four laps just far too short in my opinion and again that's going to knock the score down for this week's daily race b 100 because it 
needed to have more laps. I think everyone will agree with that. Four laps, pretty, just too, too short, over and done with. So we're going to give that another six out of 10. It could have been better. I think six laps could have jumped it up to seven out of 10 as an overall rating. But yeah, that's a six out of 10 for me personally. Let me know what you think in the comments there, what you would give Daily Race B. But now we're at the final race of the week. Daily Race C, it's the main event of the Daily Races and we're at Sardegna C, the short version of Sardegna C. Now, at the start of the week, I thought this was gonna be a, like one of the best weeks we've had because the strategy is in there. There's, it's a reasonable track. I do think that maybe the track is a little bit too short for Group 3 maybe would have suited group four slightly more but we're going from the back of the grid here in the genesis which does seem like the genesis has become quite an op car is a little bit of chaos straight away and then as we come into this corner here Fatality. yeah that's gotta hurt straight into the wall there um hits gets a little bit too close to the wall now if, to be honest that corner does have an almost invisible wall but you just can't get that close to that wall because you will get a fatality so skipping on a little bit further, we're up into P8 and the Genesis, like I say, very strong car is. P7 in the Porsche goes a little bit wide. Porsche is also pretty strong here. Just doesn't have that acceleration that the Genesis has. But overall, not too different on actual pace. It's just, yeah, the Genesis is going to give you better overtaking opportunities. So into the braking zone. And you can see quite a lot of chaos going on in front of us here. We've got five cars all battling for, I think it's for the podium position there. And we're going to try and see if we can find a way. I'm not sure what the car in front does there, as it almost drives on the grass, probably looking in the mirror to defend. And yeah, it's strange, but we're just going to back out of that. We're not going to get too much involved trying to overtake through that section, because in general, if you try and overtake through there, it ends in disaster. As a car loses control there, big spin right in front of us, and unfortunately, we get a bit of pinball physics there and knocked a little bit further back. Luckily for us, though, the green horse is behind us, driven by Jaw24, I think it is there doesn't go for the move it stays right behind us so now we're going to get the slipstream to the pink Porsche in front of me and we're going to see if we can go around the outside or off the inside we're going to have a little look for a fake and then back to the left and now we're going to go all the way to the left hand side of the track to try and go for a real wide line and break as late as possible and we make that work absolutely perfect up into p5 nice move there around the outside and now we can push on for that podium battle but yeah as a race this race i think the good points for this race are you need to change the tires and another good point is you can change tires from anywhere from lap 7 to lap 13 so it does have a big window for that pit pit stop as we're getting ourselves up to p4 with the car spinning off so yeah you have a six lap pretty much six or seven lap pit window that you can pit which gives quite nice strategy the downside is probably the track isn't the greatest group three track i think in group four might have actually worked a little bit better than it does in group three now it's still an entertaining race it's not the worst race we've ever had it's a reasonable race i've had a lot of fun here this week you're going to get a lot of chaos you're going to get especially through this section a lot of crashes so be prepared for cars crashing into the wall spinning out especially as we come through here hitting the wall on the left it's going to happen many times but overall i don't think we can break this as good as the Deep Forest Week. I think the Deep Forest Week was just better overall. Track suited Group 3 a little bit more. And it had a sim similar situation on that week as well with basically one dominant car. It was a Ford at that week. This week it's a Genesis. I do think we might see the Genesis, Genesis get a little bit of a BOP change in the future. I think you might see either a little bit of weight added or a tiny bit of power to profit. As we're gonna go for a move here, can we go on the inside? Break as late as we can and decide to back out of that because we're going to tap him on the left there. So I lift off the throttle and let him back through because we did knock him. So decided to back out of that one and let him take that position back, which I think was fair to do. So we're going to go for the move again. And what's going to help is he's going to go a little bit into the gravel there. And that's going to give us quite an easy pass to put ourselves up into that podium position. So seven laps done and we're up into P3, starting lap eight. And like I say, you can pit pretty much from anything from level 7 to 13. So that is one good thing about this race. There's a lot of strategy difference. There is a couple of cars you can use. Like I say, the Porsche has done pretty well in this race when we've seen some of the top drivers driving it. But yeah, the Genesis just, it's the acceleration with the Genesis. The acceleration is just too good in my personal opinion. As P2 goes for a pit. Now, I would have pitted there for a new, wasn't gonna pit. But yeah, ended up staying out because I thought he was gonna pit. So, um, 
we're just going to stay in P2 here, pick up a bit of citrine, and then probably go in the pits on the next lap because the only problem here now is our tyres are going to start fading. We don't want to lose too much time uh, at the moment with this race. So see if we can just stay behind in here, try not to make too many mistakes. This right hand corner is where you start feeling it mostly. Now, if you're wondering with regards to set up for this race, that is one of a positive aspect of this race. Although I would have liked more changes than what we're given. You are allowed to change your frequency for this race. I was running 3.77 on the back frequency and 3.65 on the front frequency for this race. And that's what I've been using since we made a few changes. And it feels pretty nice, I have to say. It feels quite nice to drive. So we've had some pretty decent race finishing pace. So yeah, reasonably good way of running it, I think, that frequency. Although I have heard some people on the controller have been running their frequency completely to lowest possible on the front and rear. You might want to try that on the controller because I have heard quite a few controller players saying that it works very well on the controller so maybe give that a go for your frequency but on mine I tried that and it felt too it, it felt too, a little bit too soft and bouncy for me I wasn't that keen on it but again could be an individual thing as now we're starting to catch up to P1 here you can see on the lap 15 we're getting very very close into the slipstream can we go for a move into turn one on the braking zone getting that slipstream quite nicely now we're going to go down the left-hand side. We're going to go for a little fake and see if he falls for it. He's going to hold that right-hand side. He knows I'm probably going to go for the fake. And we're going to try and go right round the outside. Now, I braked very, very deep. Did manage to slow it down. Got into second gear, squared the calf, and another nice little move round the outside there to put ourselves up into P1 in this race. And from that moment, that was pretty much the race one. As you can see, we pulled away by 2.7 seconds and got the win there so it's not a bad week this week i had i will say i had more fun on the american account than i did on the eu um i, I, I think it's possibly because we we're going from the back of the grid but the back of the grid on the eu it, to be honest it was quite a lot of chaos and i think it's because the field spread was a bit closer so on the america server you could actually get the overtakes done one by one rather than just loads of groups together but yeah 7.25 out of 10 i'm going to give this one it could have been possibly a little bit better if it would have been group four. And overall for the week, I think that's a fair score, 6.75 out of 10. It's an all right week. Daily Race B could have been a lot better. Daily Race C is still reasonably enjoyable. Daily Race A is a normal Daily Race A. So yeah, it's a pretty average, okay week. I wouldn't say it's the greatest one we've ever had. I wouldn't say it's the worst week we've ever had. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section, what you would rate these races. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and I'll be back with more of these in the future. Thanks again for watching, everyone.